Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, Aloise, a nerd in war paint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. As we find ourselves in a most uh, peculiar predicament, we seem to have found our way into some sort of phantom zone. Either that, or there were a lot of uh, concentrated hallucinogenics just underneath that trap door that Stella opened. Either way, based on what we saw with the first two chapters, we're probably in for a pretty rough ride from here on out. Especially since the very first thing we noticed here is that all of our friends are gone. And that is probably not a great sign. Either way, we'll uh, do our best to get everyone out safely. And to uh, hopefully pick up some clues and lore in the process. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. You come to in Oscar's living room. You can't tell what time it is. And your friends are nowhere in sight. The building feels colder, and there's something about the air that feels wrong. It's stale, with an undercurrent of mold and earth. It makes you feel claustrophobic, as though you're in a coffin, each breath depleting what little oxygen is left. Tabby! How did... how did we end up back here? Where is everyone? Did we pass out again? Was there a gas leak in the basement or something? Hey, uh, Tabby, is fainting some kind of weird family thing? Is there a genetic condition I need to be worried about? Not that I'm aware of. Nothing like this has happened before you got to town. Who knows what sort of nastiness was festering in that basement? Your cousin marches to the front door and opens it. Why... why does it look like Oscar's house is in front of us? Didn't we just leave? Yes, I believe we did. I must be misremembering things. Let's go. No, no, you're you're right. There shouldn't be a door there. There should be an entire library. Clearly, whatever was in that basement is messing with our heads. We just left Oscar's house. The library has to be on the other side of that door. The two of you cross the hallway and open the door. Something isn't right. No kidding. Uh, it feels like a late summer afternoon, the air is warm and wet, and the scent of flowers drift on the breeze. Yeah, that does sound pleasant. This is an interesting style. We've got animals and plants, but they're done in, like, a thick line style that makes them seem more like... Like, props or a deliberate backdrop as opposed to the... The real quote-unquote... What is... what is this? You know what this might be? Is like an artistic rendition of a greenhouse. Actually, come to think of it, we never did uh, get a chance to follow up on that mysterious intruder in the greenhouse that Dustin's mom mentioned to us. I wonder if that's related. And we've got some sort of nightmarish specter waiting for us at the end of the walkway. That's probably not great. This... Yeah, this isn't a library. Took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, Tabitha, please tell me I'm not the only one seeing that scratchy shadow in the distance. You're not. What the hell is that thing? Am I having a stroke? Are you having a stroke? Are we both having the same stroke at the same time? Well, that would be less than ideal, but uh, it, it would explain a few things. 
Tabitha, do you, uh, do you see that creature behind the thorns? Oh yeah, that's a ditchling. I was overwhelmed by the 800 other things going on. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing me and Stella saw in the woods. Ew. Well said, Tabby. So, do you think we should call the police, or...? I think this might be above their pay grade. I have a better idea. Tabitha anxiously steps into the brush and anxiously taps her foot as she waits for her phone to connect. Tabby, you're going a bit sideways here. It doesn't look like she should be able to stand there. And yet, there she is, standing there. Yeah, yeah, I noticed. Hey, it's... what? No, it's Tabitha. Didn't you see the caller ID? Stop interrupting me. Can't you hear what I'm... Your cousin is cut off by the dial tone of a disconnected call. Great. She couldn't hear a word I said. Looks like we're on our own. I wonder who she was calling. Two people spring to mind. Um... Janie or Sybil. I mean, obviously she knows both of them, and Sybil is no stranger to the occult. But uh, Janie is a wild card because she's married to the preacher who we just met and invited on this ghost hunt. So this could be a way to get him involved instead. There's got to be an exit somewhere. We just have to look. Wait, do you hear music? No. Oh. Now I do. Stella, please. Movement stirs as a figure cloaked in shadows rises to attention. Stella? Who are you? What are you doing on my property? Bark, bark. Wolf, bark. You don't say. Huh? Yeah, my, my thoughts exactly, Tabby. Holy shit, Stella, you scared me. Yeah, cut it out. Did you say Eddie? No one's called me that in a long time. It's Edwardine now. I'm not a child anymore. Edwardine? Eddie? You've got to be kidding me. Edwardine Scarlet. Uh, that's the picture hanging in our guest room. And uh, Dr. Kelly name-dropped her earlier. The longest lived of the Scarlet Clan. That is very intriguing. And once again shows that the uh, weird crap is all revolving around the Scarlet Clan. Lucky us. Also, I just realized that is not a horse on the right. That's actually a really weird-looking unicorn. That's gotta be symbolism. And it's a ram on the left. Maybe the picture back in Oscar's house wasn't a goat. Maybe that was a ram. Stella, are you okay? You don't look so good right now. You're just pranking us, right? I wish I could say the same. You should have stayed gone. And you absolutely shouldn't have shown up here, of all places. So she's not hearing us. She's she's clearly reliving some completely different event. I wonder if that's why this looks like the greenhouse. Because there's a greenhouse on the Scarlet Estate. So naturally, that might be where she would meet someone in private. Or possibly be confronted in private. Since it sounds like she was approached by someone she didn't recognize. If you're caught, I don't think you understand what Father might do. Does it even matter what I say? It seems like she's got some kind of script. Maybe once it's done, she'll go back to normal. 
A flash of pain in Stella's eyes tells you that she's keenly aware of everything that's happening right now. She is in agony. Oh, great. That's... that's good to know. Thank you. Arf, arf. I can't. It's not that easy for me. My brothers were sent to the Western Front. And now, I'm the only Scarlet left besides Father. I have responsibilities, Charlie. Charlie? Charles Shaw? The... the foreman of the Shaw Mine that was run out of town. That's... interesting. Shut up! Shut up! She can't, Tabby. She's clearly possessed. By... what? I... I don't know. Edwardine Scarlet? Tabitha tenses. You should just get out of town while you still can. Whatever you came back for, it's not worth it. I'll get you out of here, Stella. I promise. She's gone, along with the shadow in the corner of the room. Come on, we must have taken the wrong door out of the annex. We're getting out of here before anything else happens. What? No. Are you crazy? We have to go after Stella. Absolutely not. We are not being drawn deeper into this weird garden, greenhouse, whatever it is. So she sees the greenhouse too. That is also interesting. She yanks your arm, pulling you back the way you came. Where did the annex go? Um, you know what? Let's, uh, let's go back the other way. Let's turn back. Yeah, maybe we just got turned around. The two of you turn around, only to be met with the same door. Where's the annex? Where are we? Maybe we uh, turn 360 degrees instead of 180? L let's try again. You both turn again. The door is even closer. Screw this. She storms up to the door and throws it open. Bells ring as a cacophony rages outside. The door in front of you pulsates as figures unseen bang against it. The shaded figure from the garden sits in the corner, ever so slightly more defined. There is a lot to take in here. Yep, there's the specter and ill-defined figures outside, plus Charles Shaw, yeah, being literally run out of town on a rail, as was so vividly depicted in that library mural. We've got a bloody pick, clearly representing the mine collapse. And a bloody lamb could be uh, the death of innocence. And a puppet. That might imply Charles Shaw wasn't responsible for the collapse. Are you kidding me? Junior, Junior, pack your things quickly, hurry. Jesus, Rosalina, you scared the shit out of me. Maybe we should run him out on a rail too. Make an example of the whole family. Wait. Are there multiple ghosts? Your guess is as good as mine. 
please. He's only a child. We'll leave peacefully. Just give us a little time. Okay, this is um, Charles Shaw's wife. So she's talking to her child? They were only children, too. My boy was in there. Why should I give Junior here all the time in the world to gather his little toys and fancy clothes? My boy didn't have that kind of luxury. Oh. The collapse. Junior leaving, Charlie returning. It's starting to come together. Great, mystery solved. You can let us go now, ghost. Don't listen to him, Charlie. Just keep packing. Looks like the others are on their way. Better hurry, boy, or you and your little dolls here might get burned up. And as for you, lady, what makes you think you're gonna be keeping any of those valuables you're packing in that fine suitcase of yours? Charles Shaw Jr. There was nothing in the book about him. God, this sucks. I can't imagine what it must be like to be driven out of your home like this. Maybe it wasn't actually this bad. Maybe it's exaggerating things. Trust me, boy. The coppers ain't coming here tonight. And what makes you think you can talk to an adult like that? Maybe they should have had you working in the mines, too, instead of lazing around in this big house. Maybe you would have learned a thing or two about respecting your elders. Don't talk to my son like that. Don't talk to me like that, woman. I call the shots. Now get out, unless you want to go up in flames with all your precious jewels and expensive dresses. You're lucky I'm even letting you leave. Okay, so this is all being seen through the eyes of Charlie Shaw Jr. That is... Yeah, I mean, this would be traumatizing. But it couldn't hurt to get a second opinion. People keep talking to us. Who do you think we're supposed to be? We've been called Charlie twice now. We're probably supposed to be the same person we were in the last room. So we've got to be playing the ghost, right? Back when it was alive. This must be right after the Shaw Mine collapse in 1918. It's okay, Charlie. You can make new ones, even better than these. It's good for him. Shouldn't be playing with dolls anyway. Now you're going to have to earn your keep just like the rest of us, boy. No more big inheritance for you. Alexis and Rosalina are whisked away, leaving you and Tabitha in the empty room. As they depart, the front door stops pounding and opens into a beckoning white void. Okay, so the symbolism does make more sense now. Uh, Charlie made puppets. That's one of his childhood toys abandoned. And the lamb does represent death of innocence. But there was a ram in the garden later, which might represent him when he returned all grown up. So was Edwardine the unicorn? We're in hell. We both died and we're in hell. Yeah, I'm not ruling that out. So what do you think? Are we supposed to be Charlie? Is... Charlie the ghost? Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear this is Charles Shaw's son. Who were you trying to call earlier? Friend of the family. Not that it matters, though. The call didn't go through. So we're on our own. Okay, let's put our heads together. What do we know? We know that we can't leave, and we know that we're not possessed, at least as far as we can tell. And whatever we saw in this room, at least, 
happened right after the Shaw Mine collapse in 1918. I think the only option on the table for us right now is to keep doing what it wants us to do. Maybe it'll stop at some point, or maybe we'll figure out a way to escape. There's so many ditchlings here. Yeah, there are. Those things are horrible. No wonder you were such a mess when you came back on Monday. Also, I saw a man get shotgunned in the face. But I think you're right. There's only one way to get to the end of this. Shall we? Yeah, let's get this over with. You and Tabitha walk up to where the pounding door used to stand and step into the void. You're outside, and it's night. A false moon looming massive in the painted sky. Which does seem to indicate this is like a... like a play. Plywood props in the foreground and a painted backdrop. We've also got the ram again, which could imply this is another scene where Charles Shaw Jr. is an adult. No unicorn, but we do have... Lots of ditchlings and flies. The night feels thick and warm. The insects lively. Their calls unnaturally tinny. Everything feels warped and wrong. Like you're listening to a record fished from the bottom of a pond. Yeah, that sounds very much like the, uh, the classic era of silent film. Ugh. What magic words do we have to say to get you to let us go? We're sorry, okay? Whatever our family did to piss you off so much, we're sorry. You poor dear. I've been keeping track of you, scuttling around town like a tomcat. You've fallen hard for Miss Sedwardine, haven't you? Is it just me, or does that shadow keep getting closer? Not just you. There's no need to be embarrassed. Your secret is safe with me. You know, I never did approve of what the Scarlets did to your family. And what it did to the two of you young'uns. Childhood sweethearts. Just think how lovely it would be if you could just be happy together. That's what you want, isn't it? Oh yeah, so Edwardine was definitely the unicorn. Hmm. It looks like there's more to this haunting than just the collapse. I don't think I want to know so much about some fling my great-grandmother had. This is definitely too much information. And it really has nothing to do with me. I'm sure by now you've realized the young lady doesn't plan on leaving with you. But it's not for lack of desire, as you well know. It's Enoch. Even if you dragged her over the town limits, his hold over her would make sure neither of you were ever happy again. Just think of what happened to your poor mother and father. Do you want that to be the two of you? What do you, uh, know about Enoch, Tabitha? Our great-great-grandfather. He was in charge of the mines when they collapsed. You don't say. I don't know much besides that, so don't bother asking. There are so many intriguing questions here. I don't think that one's all that useful, though, because I think it's pretty clear this woman, whoever she is, does not care about Edwardine and Charlie's romance. She's pretty blatantly manipulating Charlie. Has there been some kind of theme with the possessions? Like, who's playing what role? I mean, personally, my gut says no. 
Stella as Edwardine. Rosa as Charlie's mother. Not entirely sure about Alexis or Kanika. I mean, obviously, Rosalina's way too young to be a proper stand-in for a mother. So I, I, I don't think there is, but she might come up with something I'm missing. Stella was Edwardine. Rosalina seemed to be the guy's mom. Alexis was some angry townsperson. And Kanika is some nosy old lady. If there's a pattern here, I'm not seeing it. She, uh, she appears to share my thoughts on the matter. It does seem pretty random. That was a keen eye option, though, so that really does imply we're missing something. Maybe it'll be clearer once we've seen the full ensemble. Yeah, maybe. The powers at work here are stronger than even your love could withstand. You need to break the bonds holding her here. Then you can both go free. No more misfortune. Not for you. Not for anyone else bold enough to step foot outside the holler. Kanika Mimes handing you something, though her hand is empty. Everything you need to know is on that map. The symbolism of this room could be helpful. I think I can parse some of it. The flies on the flowers could symbolize something that looks like it should be sweet, but is actually rotten. Do you know what some of this other stuff is? I mean, yeah, the uh, flowers and the flies probably represent this woman. The appearance of sweetness, concealing, ill intent. And as aforementioned, I think the ram represents Charlie himself. No, and I don't see how that helps us. It's obvious that no one should trust this lady. I mean, just listen to the way she talks. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I don't need fly-infested flowers to tell me something is up with her. That's where you'll find them. You need her there. Then read what I've written down. And be careful. Good luck to the both of you. I hope you get your happiness. Goodbye. And then she's gone. Tabitha sighs. Okay, let's find the way out. Unless you have any ideas, I don't think there's anything we can do until we get to the end. Or until we die. Whichever. That's the spirit. Before the two of you can leave, a smell hits you. Sweating, suffocated flesh. With a tinge of the saccharin and stomach-churning scent of decay. Oh. There you are. I would have found you sooner. But the Resonant clearly doesn't want me here. It doesn't seem to have the same issue with these miserable little parasites. Ah, that, uh, that's charming. Bottom feeders always manage to slip through the cracks, don't they? I mean, that felt like an implied threat, but he's not overtly attacking us. And... He did find his way in here, and he might be able to get us out. That is an intriguing assortment of responses. Hey, Wayne. I don't suppose you want to, um, help us figure this out? Don't talk to it. Let Redcon speak. I'm no enemy. Don't listen to it either. What an unfortunate situation you've been dragged into, Redgon. Why can't you do as I ask and stay out of trouble? But that girl won't let you, will she? Stella? Is that her name? Perhaps I should pay her a visit soon. 
if she makes it out alive. Okay, well, Wayne, see, when you say things like that, we are, in fact, enemies. So you just blew it, buddy. Tabitha bolts for the underbrush, desperately pulling you along. Stella. So, Wayne is connected to the Ditchlings. He knew something about them. I don't know anything about that, and I don't care to find out. But if that gets you to stop engaging him in conversation, then sure, he's connected to the Ditchlings, and he's super evil and bad, and talking to him will curse you. Or whatever it is those things are supposed to do. Wow, Scylla is freaked. Oh, yeah. The two of you step out of the brush and into a long wooden corridor lined by bottles and rails. The rails are pretty obvious. Run out of town on a rail. The bottles mean drinking to cope. The portrait on the left could be Edwardine or maybe uh, Charlie's mom. There was also a black ram in the picture on the right. A black sheep. A figure rises to attention, blocking your way. I'm afraid he doesn't have long. If there's anything you need to say to him, I'd say it now. As Zane is swept away, the room pulls itself to you, and you find yourself looming over a deathbed. Oscar lies in its center, looking pitifully small. I'm sorry, boy. Sorry I let my troubles drive your mama away. And sorry those troubles mean I'm leaving you all alone now. So the woman in the portrait was his mother. That tracks. This is Charles Sr., who uh, understandably fell to drinking after the mine collapse. There's so much. There's so much to try to figure out here. So Oscar is Charles Sr. Yeah, Charles Shaw Sr. You should probably know about him by now. Everyone in Scarlet Hollow knows about him. What about Charles Jr.? What do you know about him? As much as you do. I didn't even know there was a Charles Jr. until tonight. Besides, the ghost is filling us in on more than enough of his life story. I'm sure we'll both be experts on everything Charles Jr. by the time this is over. If it ever ends. Damn it, Jr. How many times do I have to tell you? I tried to stop it from happening. But that damned snake, Enoch, went behind my back. Oh, what bullshit. So Enoch might have been behind the mine collapse? Strike a nerve? It was Charles Shaw's fault. That's just a fact. Is that a fact, or is that just what you've been told? It's in the history books. It's a fact. Pretty sure there's a saying about that, but okay. You're right. I've been using that excuse for too many years. At a certain point, a man has to accept when he's dug his own grave. They may have run me out, but they didn't put the bottle in my hand. They destroyed our legacy, boy. Both our names are cursed with that history. I'll be dead and gone soon, but I won't be able to rest. Not until our name is cleared. Not until you can pass on this name with pride. This is my only request, Charlie. Go back there. Tell people the truth. Try to find proof. I don't know what you'll have to do, but please. 
I know I ain't been the best father, but I'm no murderer. Okay, so wait, wait. If I'm getting the order of events correctly here, uh, they were ousted from their home in 1918. That's obvious. They lived in exile. His mother left. His father fell to alcoholism and begged him to go back and reveal the truth. He went back, but instead of revealing the truth, he fell in love with Edwardine. So wait, this is after the scene with Rosalina and before the scene with Stella? That sounds about right. Then the scene with Kanika. I wonder how many more of these there are going to be. Damn it, boy. I may not have till the morning. Promise me. Promise me you'll go back. And at the very least, show that Enoch bastard what for. You know what? I think we're just going to avoid antagonizing or making promises to the ghost. You watch as Oscar's body seizes and falls through the sheets, taking the rattling pile of bottles with him. You're just gonna climb in there, huh? This ghost is so full of it. <laughs> Tabby is so done with this. Your cousin steps forward and disappears through the hole left in the bed, leaving you to follow. Follow her. You find yourself pressed uncomfortably against a trellis. A small castle sits off to one side of the wall, and the bars of a prison loom over both all of it and all of you. Where are we? Avery, good to see you. Looking extra creepy there. Climbing up the trellis again? A very Romeo and Juliet of you. No need to run off. I won't tell the old man. Though you've gotten sloppy, you should try to be more careful if you don't want him putting you in an early grave. Oh, okay. Are the bars metaphorical, or are they real? You keep asking me things like I know any better than you do. We've both seen the same rooms. Uh, yeah, but, I mean... You live here. You're the one who grew up here. I, I just thought you might recognize stuff. It's not like this is exactly what the real world looks like, is it? How am I supposed to recognize anything when it's all messed up like this? For all we know, none of this even happened. And even if any of this did happen... Who's to say this is even close to an accurate interpretation? We're watching the memories of a dead man. No, not one of her brothers. I'm a prisoner. Another victim of the Scarlet's lies. Like you, Charles Shaw. Hmm. Tabby... Does our family have a history of locking folks up in some sort of rich people's dungeon? What a ridiculous question. Of course not. I think I would know if our family had a history of imprisoning human beings in the estate. Is that a thing people actually do? A mere generation makes no difference. His blood runs in your veins, does it not? And now... It runs in hers. Yes, it seems your little trysts bore fruit. And oh, will you ever be in trouble when the old man finds out. Charles Shaw Jr. got Edwardine pregnant. So in theory, he might actually be a blood relative of ours. Uh, Tabby and I. Though we are taking this guy's word on that. And this is all being filtered through the eyes of an unreliable narrator. Tabitha's eyes go wide. 
fruit as in... Shh. Let it talk. I think this might be important. You know, you don't have to keep dangling there. Come inside. You'll be able to hear me through the door just fine. We know this door. It was in one of the end movies, I think for... Chapter 2? Yeah, locks, chains, scratched up doorframe. It's all the same. And uh, I believe that was inside the Scarlet Estate. The world around you swirls, and you and Tabitha find yourselves pulled to the other side of the wall. A door bound by countless locks and chains pulsates before you. Okay, this is definitely supposed to be the estate, but I can't tell how much of this is real and how much is metaphor. Stop talking. We might miss something. That's not what I invited you in for. I couldn't escape even with your help. I merely wanted to offer a warning. Leave town. Now. Well, Tabby, you heard it. I'd better leave town. Haha, ha, very funny. Now shut up. I'm trying to listen. You can't take her with you. It's not possible. You can always stay and die. But if I were you, I would use my healthy legs and run as far away from Scarlet Hollow as possible. I hear the beaches are nice. Why don't you take a permanent vacation there? I'm guessing he doesn't do that. Yeah, in which case, this Charlie guy has nobody to blame but himself. Hear that, ghost? You had every warning. You could have just left. Ah, you've been talking to the witch then? A very interesting. So Kanika's character was a witch. Okay. Charlie, get away from the door. Don't listen to it. It. Implying something inhuman? Stella. I promise we'll figure out how to free you soon, Stella. There can't be much more to these memories. I hope we do. How does it know that? This... this is too much. I just want to go home. Do you feel sick? I feel sick. Keep it together, Tabby. Can we talk now? What do you know about this place? I mean, this is almost certainly the estate. And whatever we just saw happened in the Forbidden Wings, just based off the location of the windows. That half of the house has been off limits for over a decade. I don't know what we just saw, okay? And I know what it sounded like here, but Charlie isn't related to us. I know that much. I think. Come on, the quicker we get through this, the quicker we'll be out of this ghost place. Hopefully. You and Tabitha walk after Stella and into the darkness. You and your cousin find yourselves crouched under a large table. Stella stares through you as indecipherable murmurs and shuffling feet echo from the ends of the table. Right, we've got the, uh, the young lamb again. So this is when Charles Shaw was a kid. The scaling would imply that, too. Two kids under a table, the adult sitting on either end. No telling who that is, though. Shaw Sr., maybe... 
Maybe Enoch Scarlet? Actually, it says from both ends of the table, so it could be both. Oh, yeah, and look at the ghost's hand. The position above the slumped but still moving puppet. Charlie did like puppets as a kid. That does explain a lot. Ugh, I don't know how, but this feels so much worse than the last room. Yap, yap, yap. They're so lovely. Are you sure I can keep one? You must have worked very hard on them. Oh, baby voice. Okay, so they are tiny kids. We've got to be near the end, right? The music is the same song that started playing when Stella first showed up. Yeah, I think you're right. What a creepy scene to end things on. I can't believe that ghost is making Stella humiliate herself like this by doing a baby voice. It's embarrassing. I'll try to keep it away from my brothers so they don't smash it. Though I wish I could make it move like you can. Oh god, that, that face. And you can even do the voices. You know, you could probably make real money if you put on a show for people. <laughs> and Stella. Possessed and still trying to monetize content. I respect that. Oh, so that's why everyone's been moving so weirdly while they've been possessed, right? He's got a thing with puppets. He sure does. A traveling show? And you'd want me there, too? Oh, could we go to towns along the beach? I've heard the Outer Banks are the most beautiful place in the world. The Avery thing also suggested the beach. That seems deliberate. I wish we could go back in time all those years ago and tell them what we know. Me too. Thank you, Charlie. I've always wanted to see the ocean. Stop. Thank you. You can see the tiniest shimmer of tears in Tabitha's eyes. She blinks, and they're gone. There. Are you done now, Charlie? Can we leave? Everything crashes to thunderous black before you or Tabitha can get in another word. A single spotlight remains, illuminating a trap door in the center of the stage. You feel drawn to it. Do we? The trap door. Are we back in Rosalina's room? We must be. Which one of us is going to open it? Why are you asking that? Are you scared? Even if I was, I'd never tell you. I'm not weak. Ah, uh, Tabby. So afraid to show vulnerability. Okay, I'll do it. You carefully step towards the trap door. It creaks open, all on its own. Oh god, this is so much worse than opening it ourselves. You and Tabitha are shoved from behind and tumble through the hatch. It took some digging, but it's there. The map was right. That means there's hope, Eddie. Whatever it is that Enoch did, we can undo it. 
we can be happy together. Eddie? Okay, you know what? We're we're gonna hit the pause button there. We'll wrap things up next time. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Scarlet Hollow, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Goodness.